Foreign Minister Jolly comes before the Operations Committee acting all high and superior, but she gets closed down pretty fast. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. So MP Jolly, Foreign Minister for the Liberal Party, came into the OGO to talk about the $9 million condominium that the uh, federal government bought for one of their political insiders. And she's trying to dance around and try to take everybody off their game, acting like she's smarter than they are, acting like they don't know exactly what every trick that she's trying to pull off. They can see it from a mile away. And I just like the fact that they completely shut her down. Like they, no matter what she tried, they didn't fall for it. They didn't fall into it. And by the end of it, she was just completely exasperated. Like she, you know, without the, once you get through, through the two or three tricks that she attempts, that's it. She got nothing else. That's the end of her whole skill set. So obviously the conservatives were able to put her on the back foot. It's, it's, it's entertaining. So first and foremost, to answer your question, this was not a political decision because it was an operational decision. And you had numerous people, officials of mine, that came to see you and said that. So these are the facts, and I really when hope that you, you can... When did you approve the $9 million Speaker, this is again luxury the strategy condo that Michael uses, Consul which is to General interrupt Tom me. Clark. Michael, can you just stop? I'll just finish. So I, I promise it won't be long. I just share. want to finish point my sentence. Order, share. Yep. Mr. Mayor? Okay. So... Uh, in spite of uh, in spite of the minister's uh, hostile response to my uh, to my first question, she was afforded equal time to the amount of time that I posed the question, even though she didn't answer it. I asked a second question, and she was afforded equal amount of time to the length of the question, and she was able to do with that what she wished. Now. If the minister wants to interrupt me, that, of course, is not in order at this committee. So, Chair, <laughs> could you please provide clarification to the minister that she will be afforded the same amount of time to respond as the amount of time that I pose the question? It has been the practice of this committee that it is the member's time. So if you wish to take five minutes for a question and provide 30 seconds for a response, that is your decision, Mr. Bear, but it is the committee member's time. Go ahead, sir. Of course, that makes her right upset because now she can't try her little tricks, right? Like that's, I can't believe how indignant the liberals try to get when they, they cut people off all the time, right? I mean, she was like, oh, don't interrupt me. I've seen her do it with reporters. I've seen her do it with, uh, well, I've seen her do it with a lot of reporters. And I just think that the fact that she comes up against somebody that's not falling for it really bothers her. To the point, and she has no, she doesn't know, <laughs> she just doesn't know how to handle it. It's just astounding. It's just astounding that this individual is Canada's foreign minister. Of all the ministers that the Liberal government selects, this is clearly the, the largest, like the most one that's out of her depth. You know what I mean? Like, she just has no idea what diplomacy is. Like, not a clue. She treats the whole thing like she's on some sort of school field trip and she's, you know, trading, pat, you know, patches under the volleyball net or whatever it is. Like it, she has no idea, none whatsoever. She's completely out of her depth. Of course, she came into this meeting unprepared. She's trying to tell Canada that, you know, the $9 million billionaire's row condominium that the foreign minister uh, service gets in New York, just in New York alone, you know, Canada got a deal on it. It's kind of really sad. So she came in totally unprepared, right? Because she just felt like she would say one or two things and everybody would just snap to attention. Unfortunately for her concept and but fortunate for us, nobody was having any part of it, at least not on the Conservatives. Of course, the Liberals were holding her hand and singing Kumbaya. To first learn about the $9 million New York City condo on Billionaire's Row for Justin Trudeau's media buddy, Tom Clark. What was the date? So first and foremost, I must say that this was not a political decision, so I learned it through the media. And at the same time, I made sure that all rules was respected, and that's the case in this case. We didn't get a date, didn't get a date from the minister. The story broke on July the 12th, and I have an email from your former chief of staff dated on June 17th that says, thanks for the briefing note of the issue. The decision to sell and purchase a new residence seems like the logical step to take in this instance. Did you meet with your chief of staff? between June 17th and July 12th? 
So uh, I must say that, of course, um, the department informed my chief of staff once the decision was taken because, of course, it was not a political decision. Chief. So many times per day, Michael. And you know what? So, it's good news because there's so, so many is, things this happening. This is flagrant malpractice. I'm sorry, on, I'm this, speaking. Yeah, and, and your time is up. I'm this, is, no, 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 this is flagrant malpractice for you as a minister to just completely ignore. Kelly, to completely, like, ag- to completely I'm sorry. Ag- I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna interrupt, I understand I'm you're gonna in the same party, I'm gonna interrupt both, everyone but at here. the same time. I'm going to interrupt everyone here. I have the floor. A uh, couple of things. It is the... Uh, Tradition in this committee, committee, we use our last names out of kind of a sign of respect, but it is the member's time. I would ask, the, you'll have, I'm sure, an opportunity to perhaps get some of your points across to other questions, but it is the member's time. We ask that you allow Mr. Barrett to speak and provide answers. You have, uh, we're at 344, so you have two minutes and 15 seconds, Mr. Barrett. So one thing we know for sure. He did not like her calling him Kelly. He did not like her getting familiar with him. Like, uh, you know, that's a first name. You know, I mean, that's the expression, right? We're on a first name basis. She absolutely, he did not like her talking that way. And she really believed that she was just going to use her female privilege to throw her weight around inside of this room. And it's amazing to me how shocked the liberals get when they realize that they're not going to be permitted to throw their weight around, that they need to have a corrupt chair to get any way or way with this behavior. And then they get nothing. Then they fall flat. So can you imagine this individual who thinks she's going to walk into a meeting with the foreign minister of North Korea or China or like none of these governments are going to respect a single thing that she has to say. She, she just thinks it's a joke. She's completely and utterly un- unprepared for her, not only for her uh, jacket, but for this meeting. I mean, he's got printouts of emails. Of course, she's lying through her teeth. On the one hand, she says that she found out through the the media, but then on the other hand, she says, oh, no, but then I checked and made sure everything was in in order. I mean, that makes very little sense to me. Are you, is it your department or not, right? And when you're making a very large purchase, not only are you making a purchase, but you're selling another uh, residence, like you, you know, what I mean, that's not just like on TV, right? You got to get involved, local retailers. There's, you know, there's probably some security stuff that has to be looked at. I mean, this is not a small operation. Many things were in motion. Not to mention the scrutiny that you would have had to go through to get into this building. They're not just going to let anybody in there. It's on a road called Billionaires Row. The scrutiny would have been severe. You know, she wants you to think that it's just uh, all happening around here by some magic. It's just all, it's all in the universe. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> it is completely ridiculous to think that she didn't, she, you know, she heard about it from the newspaper. I mean, come on, man. Come on. Of course, despite being informed that she should be using minister's last names and talking with, uh, you know, a less of a familiarity, she doesn't. Because she, she's exactly the, what's wrong with the Liberal Party. They, they want from you that what they will not do for you. So she's sitting up there demanding that she be respected while she gives no respect. I mean, she honestly believes that she walks on water or something. That she's like, you know, royalty or something. She, she just acts like she's just deservant of all of this stuff. While she doesn't reciprocate. And I find, I find that all of the liberal ministers do that. They walk in there like they're, you know, king of the hill. They act in a very immature manner. They use language that is unbecoming. They, they have behavior that is unbecoming. And then, despite all of that, they still expect that people are going to bow and scrape. Well, I'm, I wouldn't bow and scrape to you if you, you know, at all. So I don't know why in your mind people should bow and scrape to you. That's probably something you should work out. I do know that there are Canadians living in tents while these people are buying $9 million condominiums in places called Billionaire's Row. I mean, I'm pretty sure this guy could do his job with a Zoom connection from his living room in Canada. 
we should just give them a Zoom. Now, this next one is really good, right? Michael Barrett, MP Barrett is not backing down from her <laughs> at all, and she can't handle it in the smallest way. <laughs> so, so, Minister, in the June uh -huh. 17th memo to your chief of staff, it says Tom Clark approved the $9 million condo, and it was instrumental in the purchase. With hindsight, do you, do you wish that your uh, chief of staff had got your personal sign-off on this if, if you claim that you did not, in fact, know about it? So, Michael, no, why? Because you've already answered, you have already asked me the question and I've already answered. So this was a decision that, <laughs> according to Treasury Board rules, had to go through the department and therefore no These are Treasury Board rules that, that your government changed. Of course, you raised the limit just in time to, of course, buy this luxury condo for Justin Trudeau's buddy Tom Clark. I'm sorry, Clark. But that's false. Now, um, that was done in 2019. Now, right. Your cabinet made the change, Minister. So you're, you're, you're the one who made the change just in time to, to be able to make this purchase so that you could say you didn't hear anything yeah. and you didn't say anything. That's How many also. heads of mission have been, quote, instrumental in purchasing luxury condos? So this is a decision that is always taken by the department. And so I know that you've been doing character assassination against Tom Clark, and that's really sad because when you don't have your facts straight, usually really, what you do, what's really you resort sad, to personal attacks. What's really attacks. sad, Minister, is that Canadians are struggling just to get by, lined up at food banks in record numbers, and you seem to have checked out on any accountability that you should be exercising in your role as minister. And we see that instead of helping Canadians, you're helping well-connected liberal insiders. So I, I think I have just about a minute left. And... And, and I have to know, because the claim from your officials was that this was going to be a great deal. Canadians were going to save all kinds of money and that they had sold the previous condo. We heard that this was the, the case. So if you could tell Canadians now, how much was the check that the receiver general received for the sale of the former residence that justified the purchase of this $9 million condo? How much did you sell the previous residence for? So... We are convinced that we will make sure that we have $7 million uh, back for Canadian taxpayers because I think it is a good value for money transaction. It is a transaction that is actually Minister, well supported. It, is that the check and has, I'm sorry, you I'm received, still speaking. You haven't, you haven't received a check. So, and you've you spoken afraid? for a long time. It's not a question, it's actually a rent. I'm afraid we are out of time. Michael. Both Canadians are out of sorry. pocket millions. <laughs> Oh, that was that was entertaining. I mean, except for the fact that Canadians are out of pocket millions, that kind of sucks. But I just liked the way that she really felt like she was going to be pushing him around, and he didn't. He didn't even blink. He didn't say anything inappropriate. He simply stated his opinion, showing that he's not going to let her walk all over him. And she lost her mind. Now they went to the five minute round. And for some reason, she only spoke to MP Brock in French. And the translator staggered and stalled through the entire conversation. So it's, it was really not very uh, eloquent to hear. But MP Brock gave one minute left, like the last minute to uh, MP, MP Barrett, just to give us all a nice little soundbite to go out with. So, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is excellent. Paying eighteen hundred dollars per month in rent—that's less than the national average for Canadians. Do you think that's fair? That that's what he has to pay in rent for a nine million dollar luxury condo when your government is responsible for doubling rent, doubling mortgage costs, requiring Canadians to have to save twenty-five years just for a down payment? That's your government's legacy, and you're giving this guy a nine million dollar condo for eighteen hundred dollars a month. Do you think it's fair? Yes or no? How much is Pierre Poilievre paying for staying in his government-funded house? Minister, I have great right news now? for you. You're going to have lots no, no, of time to ask us questions just... when you're on the opposition side of the house. <laughs> but today, you're supposed to be a minister that's responsible for your department, and you're demonstrating a failure in that. Yeah. That is that is our time. We will go to Miss Atwin. And... Good job. <laughs> uh, I don't know why they always try it. It's not like. Um, like I don't understand why they always try to talk about Pierre Polio like that. I don't, I don't I don't get it. Like it, it like where in their mind are they making it and I got gotcha? you. Like the the guy became leader and as that individual he was given this residence. It's not 
something that he can, you know, don't forget by getting this residence, he has, they have sight lines. They know who can come up what road. I mean, the security is, is entrenched. The people that work that, that maintain the house, they come and they go like the, the leader could change, but the people that are looking after it are, are still there. Like, it's not just as simple as that. And I don't know why she thinks that it, it makes a, some sort of an I gotcha, but I do know this. I do know that by her refusal to answer the question, by her trying to deflect and by her trying to distract and trying to, you know, change the subject, she in, puts a gigantic guilty right across her forehead. I mean, it's a $9 million condominium and they're paying $1,800 a month for it. I mean, I was looking at it. It's got marble bathrooms it's got a brass uh soaking tub there's a swimming pool in the thing that's got a a, a chef in it it's got a five thousand dollar coffee machine a five thousand dollar coffee machine i bet you i go to the, the local starbucks and their coffee machine ain't worth five grand what do you need a five i mean the coffee that must come out of that thing you know wow Right? I mean, I would be willing to try one just so I can see what a $5,000 coffee machine makes. Because I'm pretty sure when I go to Tim's, that machine ain't worth that kind of money and that coffee's just fine. Now, I don't profess to know the ins and outs, all of them fancy kind of coffees. I get it that the, you know, it's a whole culture that I'm not familiar with. However, it's a $5,000 coffee machine and it really, it's a ground bean with water or steam going through it. Nonetheless, they wanted to give this guy this fancy place while they didn't sell the other place. And then off of his paycheck, they took $1,800 for this con for this lifestyle where, you know, he gets, it apparently it had a golf machine in it. I mean, unbelievable that Canadians are living the way that they're living. And these far left politicians are simply turning Canada into North Korea where the top 10 or 12 are getting rich and living high on the hog and the rest of us are, you know, scraping and scratching and trying to get by. I, I don't agree with that at all. I think that they should be setting an example, not living off of us. But that's my opinion. You can let me know what your opinion is down in the comments. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.